one. Hi, everybody. I'm Melissa Reyes, and today on Inspiring Adventures, I'm going to be bringing in two amazing guests, and I can't wait to introduce them to you. So here they are, Kim Summers Egglesey and Mike Summers. Welcome. Oh, thank you for having us. I didn't know we were amazing. Thank you. <laughs> So, well, uh, welcome to Be Live TV. This is my first broadcast for Inspiring Adventures using this app. So if, um, you know, if things go wrong, we can blame it on the app. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for being here with me. How are yeah, you? I'm excited. It's, it's fun to do stuff like this together. So that's really cool. Well, it really is. And so um, let's just have, do a little housekeeping, little logistics. First of all, can you hear me okay? Yes. Sure. Great. I hear you both just fine, too. And so first, we'll just take a little breath because we we're all in a rush to get here. So <sighs> and our sips of water and all around. And welcome, everybody. Again, this is Inspiring Adventures. It's my way of introducing people to... Um, Facebook Live into the world that I think are inspiring and are sharing their stories with us because uh, it helps us to see how we can grow and learn from each other and sets, they set an example. And a lot of times I interview people who have written books. And today I have um, an interesting uh, story to share with you because Mike and Kim have are about to release a book. They're launching a, a book that they wrote together. So I thought that was really, really neat. And I've interviewed Kim before on um, Tinseltown Live, which is my old show. And we talked a lot about um, confidence and life coaching and what it's like to, um, you know, inspire other people and try to build them up. But today we're going to talk a lot about a relationship with her father and uh, I loved the byline of the book. Tell us a little bit about the book and why it was the tra triumph, tragedy to triumph story. Is that what it is? It's uh, called Confessions from a Mailman Turned Realtor, Stories of Triumph, Tragedy, and Life. Stories of Triumph, Tragedy, and Life. And wow, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that kind of covers it all. I hope you have a lot. I think you have a lot of life yet to live. There may be a book two in about 20 years, right, at least. <laughs> so how did you decide to write this book together? Go ahead. Well, I was inspired, first of all. Kim decided she wanted to participate in it, but I was inspired by Kim having her book come out and be an Amazon bestseller, Getting Your Life to a 10 Plus. And I realized... I want to write a book. Kim Kim did it. She had success. I'd like to do it too. So I don't know how to write books. So I asked for Kim's help and uh, she remembered the stories that we tell in the book. And uh, there were things that, that I had said in, in the write up that Kim remembered how it turned out, or maybe it was a little different than what I had written. And so we both put our, our efforts into the book to come up with what the readers are going to find here. And they're, they're neat stories. Some are really funny. Some are, are very serious. There's some personal ones about the, my childhood and kind of a, some bad things that happened. Mm. And it kind of covers a whole gamut of, uh, of different uh, things that happen in everyday life. It, it really is an extension of, of us, uh, in Kim's case, for what I had shared with her. What did you What did you think about that, Kim? What was it like hearing these stories? And did you learn anything new that you hadn't heard before? Well, yeah. I mean, I wanted in the beginning. I wanted to give him all the credit and say, "No, you write the book. I don't need. I'll help you, but I don't need credit." But he said, "Well, it's special. You know, we can do this together. You were there the whole time, and I'd come home and tell you what happened, and you remember we talk about it. So it was unique. You know, it was like reliving parts of my childhood and." And there was his, you know, everybody's perspective of things is different. So it's interesting to see some of the things we thought the same on and some of the things that we differed and learning from that. Hmm. So um, let me backtrack a little bit before we go into to what you learned. Um, and tell me um, more about you, Kim. What What is it that you do? I'm going to so, put you on yourself here. Yeah, I'm also an author. So I, I actually have a book coming out at the same time as we have a book coming out, my second book, my sequel to my first book. So 
first book is getting your life to a 10 plus second book is living the 10 plus life so we're having a, a book launch celebration with with both of the books being launched and mm -hmm. i also do media and i am a motivational inspirational speaker business and life coach confidence expert i just i love helping people live extraordinary lives that's really what it gets down to and um let's see hold on i gotta switch this a little bit there oh now i'm covering you i'm playing around with the new features on this is so so much fun um so you do you have events and how i kind of first got you on my radar you were doing some life coach trainings and um local events where you invite people to come and you really help change lives you give people meaning and direction and you've had a ted talk uh where you've talked about um your 10 your is it called 10x life is that what it is 10 plus 10 plus yeah. i want it to be 10 times it's like 10 times better <laughs> Like I don't know. that's what it comes down that's to. That's the next book. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like 10 yeah. Plus. yeah. People say rate your life one to ten, and there's the belief that it could get even better than a ten. Like everything's great, so anything else that comes in is a bonus. There you go. That's so neat. Yeah. See, I'm listening. It's seeping in. I, I've always loved your energy. And even though I have, you know, never been able to slow down long enough to attend your things, we've always kind of just, you know, rooted each other on from the side. And uh, luckily, we've had a chance to meet like this. And it's it's yeah. really, really thrilling to see you. And then now I find out that you're doing this book with your dad. And I, you know, we talked about just briefly doing this interview and I went and did some research and I saw your dad's website and he and your mom are, have real, real, are realtors together, right? And so they have yeah. a video in their realtor, realty website and I was looking at it and I realized that he, he tells the history of what their business was and they had a little business in the town where I lived growing up. And I used to go to that business and I have this connection. That is amazing. Right. Isn't that yeah. so, I mean, I didn't realize you lived where I grew up. So yeah. that's amazing too. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, in this big world where we're making connections and meeting people online from all around the world, when you meet someone who lived in your, your town, even when it's Los Angeles and it's huge, it still feels really neat. It feels nice to meet somebody. So welcome, you know, to somebody from my, our little hometown. And tell me more now, um, Mike, about how, how your business grew from having that small little town business, which, you know, was our local video store which you know before this is before blockbuster this is before netflix this is before all of that where the only place you could rent a movie was this your local video store to where you became you know what you are today well it, it really goes back to the mailman days that i had been a mailman for 15 years really and and uh kim really was part of that. There were times when she went out and walked the mail route with me, as a matter of fact. Wow. And we, back when videos were first coming out, they had beta and VHS was just catching on. Our next door neighbors approached us about starting a video store. And we talked about it. We had uh, some pizza and beer together. We came up with the name Video Valley. It's the name of the place in Granada Hills. And over pizza and beer, we decided to become partners and open this video store. <laughs> and fortunately, it was at a time where there wasn't much competition. The only ones that we were competing with were the big conglomerate, the blockbusters and the, the uh, warehouses. And we realized that we could provide services that they couldn't, that we, that we could give down home, you know, country type service. And we had a lot of success with the video store, kept it open for eight years before selling it and moving on to real estate. And really the book doesn't really get into the video store days. It goes mailman turned realtor. Mm -hmm. And the video store was, was great because people would come there and congregate. They were on their best behavior. They weren't, there was no more pressures and it became like the local place in the area where people could talk to each other and have and really enjoy themselves. So we got people at their best, but there weren't really enough stories to include in the book because 
we they were very short relationships with the people we'd see them for a few minutes and they, the next time they came in so i didn't really have the kind of stories to share with the video store other than what we personally experienced like kim worked in the video store she ran she was a kid herself at the time and she ran the coloring contest for the kids and gave them stickers and you know and she took it very seriously <laughs> so she in effect was part of the the video store in those early days too anything yeah I, I learned to be an entrepreneur watching them they had quite a group of employees and i learned how to you know a lot of the business coaching really came from the beginning of that so. that's really really cool you know it's um Whatever you've you've done through your life, and I haven't read the book. It's just brand new, right? So you're launching it right now, but um, it'll we'll be coming out very very soon. Oh, um, I can't wait to read it. But I I have a prediction. I ha I have a sense that a lot of what your success has been, both of you and your businesses and in life, has been because of your family. You have a really neat family, and it really shows. Um, just looking at your smiles, especially, but um, the the connection that you have and how you present yourself and share. So, what what kind of stories do you share in the book about about how your family has supported you? Uh, from a family, let's see. We what what do you think, Kim? We do. We have just the, in the beginning <laughs> the intro. He does talk, and we both talk a lot about you know the background of our family and the strength and, and being together. And then there's examples of just along the way different things that happened that affected. Like one of the most powerful stories that's really unique is one of my closest friends still. Um, back when I was in middle school in the San Fernando Valley, we ended up hanging out and meeting. And one day she came and she got a picture to school, and she goes, "My grandpa." Had a picture of you at his house. How is that? And I go, I don't know. And I ended up bringing it home and showing my dad. He goes, Oh my gosh, that's one of the guys on my mail route. We've known them for years, and one of his dreams was always for you and his granddaughter to become friends. And um, so it kind of came about. And he he ended up sadly passing away. And so we're still in touch with them. And we got his wife to write a letter about it and how meaningful that was that we became friends as was one of his biggest wishes. All because really kind of a serendipitous connection. So that's what great. Realistically, it didn't look like his granddaughter and Kim would ever meet because she lived many, many miles away. And the only reason they met was because he passed away and, and the granddaughter's mom and her moved in with grandma. <laughs> and grandma wrote a nice letter, you know, telling that, hey, this is really how it was. It's part of the book, as a matter of fact. Wow, that's that's really neat. That and this is kind of goes back to that small town knowing each other and coincidences and things along the way. So, um, so let me see if I I'm kind of getting the feel for the book is a series of little stories like that. Is that how? Yeah, and there's there's some real crazier ones. There's ones that really could be made into a movie that are just <laughs> like you know suspenseful or mm. dark or some are light and funny. And so, um you'd never believe that he heard some of this stuff or saw some of this stuff during working, you know? Wow. Wow. How long were you a mail, a mail carrier, <laughs> Mike? Uh, really 15 years. Wow. 15 that's, a, years. that's a long time to be um, walking, walking the beat. I don't know what the lingo is. for me. <laughs> That's a good one. Then, then had the video for eight years and we had it for part of the time I was a mailman and then we finally went full time into the video business uh -huh. and, uh, and and that you know the day I was going to choose to to leave the post office they were very strict on giving you days off so I made sure that I resigned from the post office or retired whatever you want to call it the day before Kim's birthday so I would be sure to be available for Kim's birthday at that time. Aww. Do you have any brothers or sisters Kim? No, I'm a child. So I, I really grew up with them being my best friends and they still, you know, it's interesting because I'm, you know, my husband and I have been together almost 22 years and we have two kids and we really probably spend most of our time with them. They go on, on most of our trips with us. We go to concerts with them. And so they still are our best friends. In fact, her, her oh. husband are good friends to where we actually... Three years ago, we went to see the Rolling Stones together, just the two of us. In Vegas. Flew, flew to Vegas <laughs> and, and took in the Rolling Stones, so father-in-law and son-in-law. <laughs> wow. 
Hold on. I don't know if you can hear me if I'm not in this shot, but can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. This is, like I said, it's a new thing, but I keep trying to move out of it so that we can see Mike because he's kind of off the screen. Oh, there. I there. just want to make sure that we see you there because, um, you know, it's your stories. <laughs> so that's kind of neat. So what is the next event that you have going on that you're going to be introducing the book? So we have, I'm really excited because this coming March 14th, and hopefully you can come, Melissa, uh, yeah. it's in Encino, California, which to those who don't know, I would say it's about 25 minutes from Hollywood, and it's at Encino Banquet and Gardens Center, and doing a books and music celebration, and so we're launching this book, my book, two other authors' books, and I decided I wanted to make it really meaningful and giving back to someone, and so we're actually making it a books and music celebration and two different schools of rock are going to be performing pop songs, rock songs, and a Prince tribute. And uh, we're giving all of the proceeds to both schools of rock for music scholarships at this event. So it's, it's coming March 14th and, and there are still a few tickets available. Thanks, oh. I, I, it, it's done through eventbrite.com, but it, I, I kind of messed around with it. And if you Google in livingoutourdreams.com, then you'll get access to it. So that's very easy. Livingoutourdreams.com. You can buy tickets. Okay. They're $20 for individuals, uh, $30 for two people. Kids can come. It's $12 for kids. There's going to be lots yeah. of music. There will be wine, soft drinks, and lots of food. And it'll, it'll be a great event, 6 o'clock to 9.30, this coming Tuesday. That sounds so awesome. That that really sounds like a great time. Now, I have an interview around that time, but maybe my kids can go or we can work something out. So that that will be a lot of fun. And I'd love to cover it, you know, put it on the blog and, you know, on social media and tell more people about it and about your book. And so and of course, I want to try and get my hands on on your book. <laughs> So I just think that's fantastic. I I thought that I might get emotional thinking about um, having wished that I had um, done something like this with my own dad. I My dad has passed away and my mom too, and I was really close to them while they were alive. And they're still pretty close in, in that interesting way when somebody's gone. But um, I've always wished that I had done something like that. And I think that everybody wishes for... Um, more stories and more of a legacy, you know, so, and you did it. And so I'm really proud of you and, and I'm not emotional at all. I'm just so happy that oh, you did this. Well, so you know, everybody has the stories. If you sat down and, and just made a little outline, you'd come up with a lot of things in your life that you could write about. Yeah. And what with Kim's encouragement, I finally did it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know that my dad always wanted to do that and talked about it. And I have, and he was very interested in, in asking about other people's stories. And I think that influenced me a lot. And so, uh, and I write, I have a book too, and, and I've written um, a little bit about my life, but, and that's how I started with blogging and, and writing, but listening to other people's stories and sharing them on, doing an interview and, and video and even writing it, to me, it's just, I love it. I love listening to other people's stories and learning about people and, and finding out how, how much we are the same and, and um, how important it is to, to know that we all go through, you know, some wonderful and some hard things in life. And that's what makes the world go round, you know? So uh, yeah. congratulations to you both for doing this. I think it's a really great thing that you've done for your kids too. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. So how was the writing? How did the writing work? How did the details of the writing work? Who did the actual? <laughs> it was interesting. He, he would submit the story. It actually was easier for me. He did the writing, and then he would submit the story to me and tell me, okay, tweak it, add to it, edit it, put your memories in it. And um, then, you know, I did put it all together, and then we sent it over to the editor-publisher. But, uh, but the putting it together was more hard work because I feel like trying to organize it into what chapters match what and what categories, that, that really was the hardest part. But he did all most of the writing. Well, so, to, to, yeah, they did the basic story, but then – she put in things that she remembered different. You know, we all have memories of things and they aren't exactly the same way every time you, you think about it. And she remembers things that I didn't remember, for example. 
Yeah. So, uh, so that, that was a really nice collaboration then you kind of brought the story from both perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you an example of one of the stories if I can. Of and course. It's one of the titles is called God Answers Prayers. And mm -hmm. it's a story of a lady that I represented uh, the husband and wife probably 10 years ago, sold their house and we stayed in contact and we were up, the family was up in Lake Tahoe a couple of years ago. And I got a call from her while I was in Lake Tahoe. And she says, Mike, I need you to come over. We're going to buy a house. And I knew that they weren't doing real well. And the husband was having trouble uh, medically and mentally. He was, he was very They had depressed. lost everything, right? Yeah. They had pretty much yeah. lost everything. And, and uh, she says, well, can you come over to the house when you get back from Lake Tahoe? And I said, sure. So I met with them. And they proceeded to show me that they had won the, the, a scratch off for $777,000. Oh, my and gosh. To hear the story of how they won it, she, she only had a couple dollars left and went into a 7-Eleven. And she and borrowed it was on the 4th of July. And someone. she borrowed money. And, they, and, they, and she won like $20. She went back in, bought it again, proceeded to scratch off a $777,000 ticket. She wow. said, she said just before she scratched it off, dear God, please help me buy a house. <laughs> when, and sure enough, they, they bought a house. The husband no longer was depressed. He wasn't worried about not providing for the family anymore. The son was able to go to see son and they didn't know how they were going to pull that off. And it truly was and a miracle. House. And I was a part of it. And, it, and you know, so and they're still in their house now. And they, they, bought it, and they bought it for 450000 It's probably worth another 50000 from the time they bought it already because the prices have gone up. But there's one example of, of one of the stories in the book. Well, that is, that's an, an amazing story. That's a little miracle right there and so uplifting. And, you know, that brings hope and it's, just one of those. What the, what are the chances of that? Yeah, that's really neat. That's really neat. Then and, and, and you help them, and wow, everybody kind of wishes for that. And you know that story that they say uh, where if that oh how's it go? The guy saying how um, how can he always ask God for for to win the lottery and he never wins the lottery and and when he finally goes to heaven and asks how come i never won the lottery and god says well you know you've never played you always yeah. said you know <laughs> you said you wanted to win and i would have been able to help you with that but you never play oh <laughs> so you know you got to take those risks in life and look at that wow i a lot of tickets right after that happened but it didn't work for me <laughs> Well, whatever, you know, whatever was meant to happen, happened, but that's kind of neat. That's, that's a good story. And so what are some of the, um, you know, what are some of the sad or more difficult things that you had to, to, to share? And you don't have to share the exact story, but what was it like writing it together? Some of those tragedies. It was good. It was very kept us in communication and it, it was it was a nice feeling to to do something together and, and it was I, a slow we did it we didn't put pressure on ourselves we kind of did it over the course of a year and a half or so uh -huh. and the sad stories we just made sure because some of them are sad or or tragic but we tried to make them really heartfelt still mm -hmm. and in enough light-hearted and comedy stories so that the book is not just you know, tragedy. And some of them are triumph over tragedy. So it's quite a mix, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And so it was interesting. And it was also just kind of asking like, is this one okay to put in the book? Maybe we shouldn't put that one in, you know, that kind of thing too. Yeah. I'll give you an example of a bad one that's in there. Okay. Uh, this called us to come over and list his house. And he had a two story house and he introduced us to his wife and she was very, very pleasant. And she was like childlike. And, and as time went on, I learned that, you know, she had had a stroke and she really was about the same as a seven year old child. Mm -hmm. And, but he was so loving. He would, he would take the time because she still couldn't physically move real well. So he would walk her up the stairs and back down and just kept her, you know, really as happy as she could be. 
and he was such a nice gentleman <clears throat> and uh, he was seemed like very anxious to get the home sold quickly and we had an offer for the house and i really thought it was too low and i told him it was like the very first offer he said no no that sounds fine to me we'll take it and we proceeded to close the escrow and they were moving to victorville where they were going to be with a lot of family members they there was new housing tracks and several other family members were living in victorville and it was very important that he get there and buy his house in victorville well to make a long story short what we finally learned the reason why he had been in such a hurry was that he had cancer and wanted to leave his wife close to the family so that they could take care of her in the house there. So uh, I see. Uh, I see. Was his he was preparing for his his Yeah, he didn't tell us didn't know the whole transaction, but we learned a couple months after after they had purchased the house and he had sold the house and it was in Granada Hills mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that he had in fact passed away. Oh. Oh, wow. So you, so you're the steward of these things happening. And, and as a realtor, you don't really, I mean, I never really thought about that. You were involved in the lives of these people in that way. That's well, really people don't know. The interesting thing too, is that most of his people on the mail route ended up being video store customers. And then the mail route and the video store ended up being the real estate in many cases. farm and area a lot of them and so it ended up being like a community and he's known a lot of them for years and so he has these tons of mailman stories but then also tons of realtor stories because yeah. he get very social and personal and heartfelt with people and so that's the stories occur you well, know, with it, that energy as a mailman i probably knew many of the people better than their own spouses knew them just because they knew <laughs> mailman well, now, okay, so now I'm getting a little emotional because that, I just find that to be really touching. And that, I think, is about you because that takes a special person to de develop relationships with people over time like that. All right, you talk. Tell me another story. Uh, well, I think that you are, you are a very special interviewer because you, you are vulnerable and authentic and you wear your heart on your sleeve and you're not, you can tell that you're not trying, you're just you. And that's rare. So many people come across stiff or fake because they're trying to be this perfect interviewer. And as a speaker and I train speakers, I'm all about that. Like just let loose and be you. So I commend you for that. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, you um, I hope <laughs> I hope I don't come across being unprofessional because I don't prepare anymore. I've been doing this long enough that I don't use notes and I just, I feel that I'm more comfortable when I just have a conversation. Like if I'm just talking, I tell my guests, um, you we'd met before, so I didn't feel like I'd prepare you but for pe first timers I just say you know I'll it says if we sat down next to each other and started talking and we'll discover and I like to have that discovery um you know because it's on live video <laughs> it's a little it's a different but uh you know maybe we'll have a lot of people watching or maybe we won't have anybody watching and we'll edit it later it's content it's going to be something that we can use for the future it's live for that moment but that's mm -hmm. what life is like, you know, it's not television. It's not, you know, billions of people watching. It's just what real life is like. So I try to do, I try to be myself. I love it. Yes. Thank you. you know, I, have, I have a story, if time permits, where sure. actually the post office and real estate kind of touch each other on this story. Okay. And the way it works I was a mailman and delivering to this one family's house in Granada Hills. And the young lady that lived in the house with her dad uh, was working for the post office and was very unhappy with the place she was working. She complained you know, that they were picking on her and just everything was terribly wrong. And, you know, I told her about where I worked and I had its problems too, but it was certainly was a lot more fair than what she was describing. And, she, I told her who to talk to, and she proceeded to get hired to work in the same post office that I did as a clerk. Well, as fate would have it, a good friend of mine in the post office met her, and they, they actually began dating, became very close, and got married. So kind of we, we indirectly led to them getting married. Uh-huh. And 
they never forgot. And years later, he retired and, and moved on. I'm not ready to retire, but uh, he moved. He retired and moved on. And uh, they called me one day and said, hey, Mike, uh, my dad passed away. Her dad, that was the dad that was with, him, with her when, when I suggested she go to another post office. But she says, I, we need to sell the house. Mm. So sure enough, I, I sold the house for them. And we went out to dinner together, and uh, he he remembered all these things that occurred in the post office that I had completely forgot about. And it was a lot of fun, and uh, it, it was it was a very uplifting meeting. And, and I I can attribute my my business with the family because of the relationship that I had from back and forth. So another one, another. That's yeah. yeah. That's so neat. That's that's yeah. neat. Right here. Yeah, let's see that. So, That's the read, back. read what it's about. As yeah. Far as the... Yeah, it just says Mike and his daughter. Oh, up here. You're in for a treat. These true stories written from the heart by father and daughter will take you through the entire gamut of emotions. All these moving stories from a down to earth mailman turned real estate agent are true. You will feel love, trust, faith, irony, sadness, and joy. Wow, so, I think I found all of that in the last twenty minutes just talking to you. <laughs> Yeah. You know, that's delightful. That really is. And, you know, how, how sweet is that? So what is what does mom think about all of this, Kim? My mom? Yeah. Yeah, no, she's very supportive. She actually has co-authored two books with me as well in the past. Co-authored a bunch of books. Um, this is actually my eighth book I've co-authored. Um, and so yes. my mom did that. So it was my dad's turn. Yeah. Oh, all right <laughs> then. She's already done it. She's Kelly. done it. She's been there, done that. So she's like, okay, it's your turn. <laughs> I did not know that. Me about discovery? I did not know that. That's fascinating. That's really great. Wow. Look at you. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because that's what he didn't mention, but I, you know, I do mainly a lot of speaking. And my dad at his real estate office for 20 something years, he's been planning the personal development meetings and hosting and interviewing and speaking there um, monthly, if not sometimes weekly as well. So he does that at the real estate office and they're, in, they're one of the top real estate offices in um, the San Fernando Valley in LA. It's uh, Park Regency Realty. We interview our top agents and I've, I've been doing that for 18 years. My way of giving back to the company, which is a great company, but we interview the top 15 agents one each week, and you get to really the people, and they share how they have success. And most of it has to do with with them taking the time to build relationships. But they've had they've had Jim Rohn there. They've had Chris Wagner. Um, real big big speakers. They've had Tom there. He didn't mention that, but they're known to they get articles in the paper about these big speakers coming there. So that's pretty cool. That's really neat. I I know very. Well, let me get back here. I know very little about the real estate industry, um, except for what I've experienced buying and selling our home. Um, but I do have heard of Park Regency because, you know, living here. Um, I do seem to think that there's a rise going on right now with realty um, as, you know, the market is getting it better. So do you have any advice for new people who are looking to either get into it as a career or who want to, you know, maybe buy properties? What is your, what is your take right now? It, it, it's very competitive right now uh, in that there's not many listings. Uh, mm -hmm. When I back in 1992, I have to think for a minute, uh, there were 14,000 listings in the San Fernando Valley. Currently, there's about 1,400. Wow. Yeah. yeah, wow. Uh, so it's very competitive. Uh, for a new person, I would recommend that uh, they work for a, a longtime agent and become an assistant just to learn the business would be one way of doing it. Or come to a company like Park Regency where they have a lot of training, a lot of programs going on, and they're not left to hanging in the wind there. But it's it's tough. It's statistically ninety seven percent of people who enter the business don't make it. So it's it's a very tough. Uh, you have to be very self motivated. If you're a little lazy starting out, you're not going to make. It. So that would be my advice. Yeah. No. I know. I do a lot of coaching with realtors, and I feel like. It has to be someone very driven, and then they love it, and it's great. But you have to be 
disposable marketing yourself. And a lot of people get kind of weird about that. It's the same as like marketing yourself as a host or a speaker. Right. You know? Yeah. Well, you you would know being the confidence expert. I mean, it's it's really it is tough to you know. I still my main my main I don't know. I want to say um, obstacle is my own fear, my own self getting in my way of of asking to be paid for things that I do because, you know, I have a job. So I keep saying, well, I have a job. I have an income. So all of this is just for fun. But, you know, I put a lot of work into it. So there are ways to get paid. And so, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. So, yeah, I'm not that I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. And, um, you know, so getting to know people like you who've just everything you've done seems like you've you've done it the right way and you know how to do it. But and so you set a great example. And that's why you're inspiring to me. Who you when I asked you who inspires you, you said you inspire each other. But who has really inspired you outside of your family as far as getting this kind of work done and getting the books written and getting your careers um, you know, so successful? Maybe you should go first, Mike. <laughs> Kim, Kim has just You're taken... You're not supposed to use me. You have to no. Oh, no, no, I'm... Okay. I'm, no, but Kim, Kim has, in her life, she's taken everything that she's learned and, and she's lived a very genuine life. And so this is just an extension of who she is. Yeah. But she becomes inspirational to me. I want to do better because I watch what she does and how she how she handles her family. But I learned from them. So, and, and you know, really... <laughs> Him and the head of their real estate company are the ones that introduced me to Jim Rohn in the first place. And so it's interesting. So I would say Jim Rohn, and I think he agreed. Jim Rohn was one of the big, you know, king's gurus of personal development. He really even taught Tony Robbins. So Jim Rohn mm -hmm. is very big. Um, a, a woman, the transformational leader named Niyurka was a really big mentor to me. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, office too. I would definitely Ooh. say, um, and I think we were on your uh, other show when right when Prince died and I cried on your show, uh, yeah. and, Prince has been a, a, and still is a huge inspiration with his wisdom and philosophy and lyrics and energy, um, just life changing for me as well. So, well, since you brought that up, how did your DJ experience go <laughs> in your previous uh, uh, marketing spot today? Yeah. Tell me about it. Look, look to my Facebook page, Kim Summers Eggleston, and I'll be posting that soon. I I think it was really one of the best radio experiences I've ever had. I, I got to be interviewed on Buddy Samson's radio show, um, a, a radio show out in the San Fernando Valley, and also got to be a DJ as a Prince tribute. And I got to tell my Prince stories, and it was just magical. And I want to be a radio DJ now, too. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. So fun. Oh, that you'd be great at that. Go ahead, Mike. The book launch. Yeah, the book too. launch had the Prince tribute by the schools of rock as well. So. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be awesome. So you're mixing a little bit of your um, what you're passionate, what you just love, with you your inspiration and it kind of giving back when you do yeah. that and and passing it forward and and sharing it with others. So that's that's got to feel really good. That's really cool. So that so you dropped a, a, a couple of names of people who inspired you, and later I'll go in and type those in so people can connect and and see how that came about because I think that's really neat. I always like to put that in, um, you know, to see how how we're shaped and and led into a direction, and uh, just imagine all the people that you are the person that they'll say who inspired them it was Kim Summers Egglesey. I think that's really cool. That's going to happen. Yeah, it's it's nice to receive feedback and testimonials and notes, and mm -hmm. that feels it really does. It fuels me every week. So that's so neat. And now, you know, the two of you together. So, uh, what is next for you? For you two together? For you and the whole family? Are you going to write books with your kids? What? <laughs> Who's left? <laughs> My, with my 10 year old who knows she's got lots of goals but uh, she's an actor yeah, but um, but yeah no we're gonna just be promoting these books and um you know i have a bunch of events i'm sure my dad will do some sort of thing at park regency promoting the book and maybe talking about it like a little seminar or something there 
And we, we have lots of trips planned to do that. That's important. Uh, I feel like that's an education in itself and relaxation. And so that's fun. You know, something I recommend that we do as a family that, that really works for people is plan a middle of the year trip around the 4th of July, which we go to Lake Tahoe every year during that time. And at the end of the year for New Year's. And it really is a great pull through to have trips with the family middle of the year and beginning of the year because you're it, it gives you something to strive for if you're if you're in a family that is together or gets along <laughs> or, or individually without family if it works yeah better. or with a best friend sure or you know or just anytime or with if you know whoever you want to travel with i think that's a great thing to say to to have those times of year to get kind of through half the year and then the end of the year. I'll agree with that 100%. One of the best year, one of the best vacations my family ever went on, we took my mother in law and our kids to um, Disney World oh, and wow. we went for over Christmas vacation. So it was just after Christmas through New Year's and we came back. Um, so we were in Orlando for New Year's and it was so much fun. It was just a wonderful experience. And we planned it before we had kids. We had thought it through that we would plan and have money um, saved so that we could take this trip when all three kids or whatever, our kids were age, ages appropriate that they could all walk and go on rides in Disney because we love Disney World, um, you know, at, and we would take them all and go on this trip. And we did it. It was one of our goals. And, you know, then we wanted to go on a trip to Europe or something when they were all old enough to go and remember it, but young enough to still want to go with us. And we had that trip plan, but then we ended up also not realizing that that would be around the time they'd want cars. And so cars kind of took over, like uh, they didn't have money for both. We had, they needed transportation. So <laughs> like boys needed their cars. So we did that instead, but, uh, but yeah, that, that was a really fun time. That was one of the best trips. And I think it's wonderful that you do those, you know, trips and what, what places, what are some of your favorite places that you've gone together i mean i we there's been places i've gone you know with my husband or solo but uh together i would say we've agreed on that it would have been costa rica hawaii mm -hmm. that's where in playa del carmen mexico and that was really we go to mexico mm -hmm. a lot mexico so we have cabo coming up we love cabo mm -hmm. um, and we already planned that and booked it <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's nice to forward to and then next summer we're going to all go to rome and venice italy Oh, wow. That sounds wonderful. I've always wanted to go there, too. Well, that's true. Yeah, they've never been to Europe, and we've been a lot, so it's their turn. We show them around Europe. Costa Rica, her, our, my granddaughters, her daughters, were the most thrilled when the place we were staying had a restaurant right in the jungle, right as you went into the jungle. With the monkeys. And, and there were these white-faced monkeys everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> Have breakfast with monkeys all over Stealing the place. Stealing your food. It was hilarious. But they weren't they weren't like dirty or mean. They just were funny. But my kids were <laughs> cracking every breakfast. It was so cool. They'd wait for people to it was like an open air restaurant and they'd wait for people to leave the table and then the monkeys would run and grab whatever they could and run <laughs> off into the bushes again. But, how, how old were the girls then? Um, it was like a little like it was two years a year and a half ago or so. Oh, um, so yeah, my, my little one was two and the other one was eight. Right now they're four and ten. They must yeah. have loved that. <laughs> so fun. Yeah. yeah. That's that sounds like fun. That's fun. My kids had a blast when they were that age. We used to take them places. Well, now it's different. Now they want to go to Tokyo. They want to do these, you know, really high tech kind of things. So I can they could go. <laughs> You know, but um, anyway, well, that's really neat. I, I think that um, you have so much to share, and I know that you're going to be a great success with your book, and thank you so much for telling me all about it. So we've got the event coming up, multiple things going on with both of you, and um, so much so much love and joyfulness. What what advice do you have for our listeners, um, you know, to, to be, to live that joyful life? Um, that joyful life. I don't know how else to put it. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel that, um, especially in today's times, I feel that 
instead of taking in the negativity and letting it affect you and making yourself crazy and then putting out more negativity, work on the foundation of your being and of yourself and make you your best self. And people think that's selfish, but actually you're serving humanity and you are living by example and you're helping others. The more you make yourself better, the more you're going to help others. And so that includes like developing your confidence, going to seminars. Read. If you can't find time to read, read like 10 minutes before you go to bed or in the morning, you know, or watch positive video on YouTube when you have a three minute break. I mean, it could be as easy as that. And then it adds up through the week and be so careful who you're spending time with. That's so huge right now because the drama creators and the naysayers and the negative Nelly are the ones that are adding to all the other pressure out in the world. And then the people are walking around overwhelmed and stressed. And so I really feel that building the foundation of your positive self will help everyone else. And then if you want to, you know, join a cause or do something, you'll be in a positive mindset and you'll add positive energy to that. So true. So true. Thank you for saying that. I, I think that you've been a little bit in on my A Year in Bloom group, and that is what that's all about. I feel like this is the year. This is the year we're going to shine, grow, thrive, and bloom, which is like that feeling of being your best self. I want to be my best, my healthiest, my happiest. And it takes a lot of energy that takes like a lot of nourishment and caring for myself. But um, I think that's, that's going to be beneficial all the way around, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, how does your garden grow? You know, I mean, we have to take care of it. <laughs> on, on a personal level, what, what I recommend people do, and people always say, oh, we're going to go travel this year. And then they don't schedule it and they never do it. Schedule it. So mm -hmm. last week I went ahead and we agreed where we were going to stay in, in Cabo for New Year's. Not until next New Year's. We already booked yeah. it. And, oh, good for you. But to do it with the traditional travel agent, because then you don't have to pay it all off right now. You, you put your down payment, and then your the, your balance of the money, in this case, isn't due till November the 8th. So they you can still go ahead. do that. There's still travel agents that do that. <laughs> I did not know. Keep going. Tell me more. <laughs> tell it mike right there's a few that do that still i think so well tell them to contact us and we'll give them a good travel agent's name <laughs> i'm going but, to i think that's great really time to schedule it don't put it off if you don't schedule it you won't do it yeah that's with anything though i mean people get overwhelmed but we all have the same amount of time in the day and you know the the person that's the corporate 70 hours a week and the person who's the mom and working and balancing everything, we all have the same amount of time. And so it's just scheduling. And you know, my big thing is don't do anything that you feel less than 100% about. And that includes like going to lunch with someone, saying yes to an event. To only do things that are 100% in your heart and soul. Otherwise, why are you doing it? You know, what right. if you're spending time doing things you're not fully passionate about? So true. So true. And, you know, if you're fully passionate about giving yourself and giving of yourself and helping someone else and you know that's that's okay it's it's not saying you have to say no to everything but if you're not getting everything else done and you're feeling terrible about it you're not helping anybody by you know exactly. going in you know half half baked picked <laughs> up helping people and I don't know if we mentioned it here but but the book Oh, all the proceeds. Uh, all, all net proceeds are being given to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. We're not profiting anything at all. This is a, a, a book of love. It's, it's something that we've got the sense of accomplishment, but we wanted to do some good. And so anyone buying this book, you're really giving to St. Jude's. Move over to the middle and hold that book up and say that again. Yeah. I want to make sure I get that. Well, the March 14th, this book will launch on Amazon, and anyone who buys it on March 14th, 100% of the proceeds will go to St. Jude's, and anyone who buys it anytime, we always are going to give the proceeds, but but March 14th, of course, we're aiming for it to become a bestseller, why not? Um, but it yeah. is all, all for charity. And we That's... don't have the price on it, it's probably going to be around $11, $12. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's wonderful. That's amazing. And I love St. Jude. Uh, I love St. Jude's... Uh, 
I love St. Jude's Children's Hospital, Research Hospital, Marlo Thomas, Danny Thomas, all that is, you know, grew up with that. Um, and it's such a wonderful place that gives to the whole family. It's a wonderful charity for people when they need help, um, when their children are, are suffering. And uh, I that's one of my personal favorites to give to. And then um, so that, that you're doing that. Plus, St. Jude is you know, the saint for the patron saint of hopeless cases. And that was my mom's patron saint. So that is always one that I, um, that I love to, to give to. So I think that's fantastic. I'll definitely be buying mine on March 14th. So <laughs> thank you for sharing that. That's terrific. Thanks. That's terrific. Well, I'm going to wrap it up. And, and if you have any questions for me, or if you have anything else you want to share, make sure you let me know. So um, if you if there's anything else and also if you think of it, anything later, you could come in and drop the link in the comments. You know, that's what's so beautiful about live broadcast yeah. here on Facebook. It's great to be able to do this. I'm the only other time I think we've done we've spoken together at things. But the only time we've done an interview was when I interviewed him for my confidence course. Nothing we've done. So you just gave us our second interview. So it's thank been you. really awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, you, yeah. I would love to meet you both in person. I hope I see you on March 14th. And if not, maybe another time we'll get together for, you know, coffee or something and, and take some pictures together. I think that would be a lot of fun. And Yeah. Um, All right. Well, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. And uh, Close in together. I want to get a little together shot. Oh, you are so wonderful. Thank you. Thank you both. Kim Summers Edelsey and Mike Summers, the authors of um, From a Mailman to Realtor. Confessions from a Mailman Turned Realtor, Stories of Triumph, Tragedy, and Life. Yes. That's, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll talk to you soon. Good luck with that. You too. Thank, thank you for everything. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, everybody. Well, have a wonderful afternoon. And thank you for being here on Inspiring Adventures with Ms. Meliz. We'll see you next week.